it, the, the enemy would have us to isolate people. That's, that's a part of his plan. Mm -hmm. And so we can isolate a group of people to make them feel less than, inferior, unwelcomed, uh, not warranted in church, particularly in church, then why wouldn't we do that? So he'll use people to do that kind of thing, to make people feel like they're not welcome. Or they're, you know, my thing is there is no sin greater than another. And some will come back and say, well, you know, that's, they're, they're abominations, they're this, this is what the word of God says. My thing is who am I to judge you based on what you do and don't do? Because you don't see me when I go home. You might see this person in the open because they might be openly homosexual or openly whatever the case may be. No one is singling out or uh, isolating the whore, or as the church would say, the whoremonger or the thought. <laughs> They're not closing, uh, you know, putting a shield up for that. Mm -hmm. So we can choose a group, we will. And I do believe that it has something to do with the plan of the enemy. Absolutely. The church is supposed to be the hospital where all yeah. the broken people gather mm -hmm. for healing. Unfortunately, if broken people gather, then they're still meeting in their brokenness. Mm -hmm. And the brokenness doesn't end with your entrance into, into the fellowship. So unfortunately, while we're supposed to be that place where everyone loves and where everyone can find love, regrettably, we're not perfect people. So we relate to each other mm -hmm. in our brokenness. We relate to each other with a, a, with a mindset of righteousness by comparison. Mm. <laughs> I might have a big sin, but at least I'm not yes. him, mm -hmm. you know. And so we like uh, uh, our our fellowships, our members. We we step on each other in order to elevate self. But still, this is the fellowship where that kind of thing can meet its end. Supposedly, this is where we go to learn the love of the Lord, the one who accepted. Everyone, the one who died for everyone. And like, uh, like, like it's been said, there is no one sin greater than another, and he died for it all. You mentioned the one who died for it all. I think that when we begin to shift our focus from even the brokenness mm -hmm. of those that come into church or are a part of the body of Christ or the brokenness that is in the world and humanity, and you truly focus truly focus on just one the audience of one you don't focus on the people in the pews you don't focus on the people in the pulpit you literally put your focus laser your focus on Christ on God you'll begin to see things shift and things change mm -hmm. but until we do that you're going to continue to see the broken people coming in and they will continue to leave broken 